All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined just up the road in Orange County in Newport Beach, uh, Dr. Jeannie Michelle. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great on this beautiful, sunny day. We're lucky we're in Southern California right now. Yeah, yeah. I have to admit it's an absolute, it's an absolute cracker of a day. So sorry if you're in uh, one of those places where it's not as nice. Um, what can we say? Um, we love it. Yeah, and we'll try not to rub it in. <laughs> and we'll try not to rub it in, exactly. Um, so, uh, Dr. Jeannie, you're part teacher, part modern day philosopher, part change agent, part coach, but very passionate about helping people create extraordinary relationships and, li and, and lives. And what we wanted to talk about today is the healing power of courageous conversations. You can't heal what you don't want to talk about. And let's face it, um, Dr. Dr. Jeannie, have you have you seen over the last while, maybe the pandemic, is that are people are people sort of spending a little more time with themselves and realizing there are maybe things inside of them that they need to talk about or conversations they need to have, or are we just going about our daily lives burying things as we as we usually do? I think probably it's a combination of both, but I think people are being a little bit more introspective right now, especially as you're kind of been quarantined, if you're in a relationship with that special someone, you know, mm -hmm. I, we, we struggle, we so struggle with our communication and with the misunderstandings. And yet there is an opportunity with all of this, you know, time together to really go a little deeper. So a mm -hmm. combination of, I think, people being irritated with each other and people who want to are going a little bit deeper. So this is so I mean, obviously, this is multi layered. I mean, this mm -hmm. first of all is you have, have to you have to kind of go inside yourself a little bit and try and uncover or discover what it is. Mm -hmm. What are these these things that perhaps are holding you back? And then the second part of that is you've got to find a way of actually articulating it. And and both are very di quite difficult processes mm -hmm. in themselves, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There are, you know, in any conversation, there's two parts the person who's speaking and the person who's listening. And I love the idea of collaboration. You know, if, if you set an intention and prepare, like if you're gonna talk about a difficult topic, if you think about what you wanna talk about and, and kind of hold that person in higher regard before mm -hmm. you have conversation, I think the prep work matters. You know, John, I think there's three no's that I think we all experience. And that's the desire to be known, noticed, and know that we matter. And mm. when you take those into consideration when you're having a conversation with somebody, I think that helps. Yeah, and, and I, I'm, I like what you said there because uh, I think at, at times, like maybe we are, in some ways, we, we diminish the issues that we have because we don't think that either they're important enough or we're important enough to, yeah. or uh, important enough for even for somebody to listen to them. Mm -hmm. I would absolutely agree with you. And we're afraid of rejection. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of fear, especially when you're coming up with something that you want to talk about that's really important to you and someone that's really important to you. I think we get a little scared. And you're right. Do I have enough value to bring this to the table? But what happens when we don't is we just keep stuffing it down and then ultimately it comes out in passive aggressive ways or sometimes even more aggressive ways. Or, as, or, 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 you know, it turns into, you know, depression and other things. Mm -hmm. and, and so, so how do, uh, when you talk, when you work with people, how do people start to go about recognizing the things within themselves that maybe they do need to lift, you know, lift out of themselves and, and confront and have conversations about? You know, I think many times, John, it comes from experiencing a crisis. You know, all mm -hmm. of a sudden you realize that you're not as connected as you want to be with the person that you love, or it could be even in business with your boss. You just feel, you start to feel a little bit lost. And I think that is a signal that there's something deeper going on. And I think with this time, like you said, when we've had the pandemic, we've had more time to be a little bit more introspective and think about things. And, and it takes courage you know, to bring those things up and talk about them and, and to really look at yourself. 
And if you think about uh, one of the byproducts, obviously, of the, the pandemic for a lot of people was, uh, you know, that suddenly maybe they're working from home or maybe they lost, mm -hmm. unfortunately, lost mm -hmm. their job or their business was suffering. And maybe those things that they relied on as anchors in their lives mm -hmm. were suddenly taken away. Mm -hmm. And maybe they sort of realized that they were missing other anchors or they hadn't paid attention to other anchors like family, mm -hmm. like relationship, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. And and now those were a little bit laid bare. Mm -hmm. You're right. And I think it has given us more time. You know, we live in such a busy society. I mean, you can run, run, run. And if you have kids, they've got soccer, they've got basketball, whatever. And we lose sight of the importance of connection. And I think that we've had more space for that mm -hmm. connection with the pandemic. And I think there are a lot, a lot of people are struggling to make it through, but a lot of people are going inside and saying, you know, you, you hit a little bit of depression, like you said, or a little bit of anxiety. And when you have a partner, then you can sit down and talk about that and get to the mm -hmm. other side of it. It really makes a difference, you know? And, and I think one of the biggest keys when you're thinking about talking to somebody is to be curious. When you're mm -hmm. curious, you get out of your, your need or a tendency to defend and you ask more questions. Like if I'm curious about you, I'm going to ask you questions and I'm going to look you in the eye and I'm going to really connect with you. And I think to be open, instead of having a preconceived notion of what you want at the end of that conversation, to be open to what can potentially come out of the collaboration between two people. How yeah. does that sound to you? No, I think that sounds fantastic because, uh, Often, when you start a conversation with somebody about something that's, mm -hmm. you, you know, like deep or something that's troubling or whatever it is, one of these different conversations, number one is often you don't know how to articulate, as I said, you don't know how to articulate it. So you're already kind of struggling a little bit. So you mm -hmm. need somebody there to the collaboration element, I think is fantastic because you need the other person to help you, mm -hmm. to help you articulate what you're trying to say and maybe throw some throw some additional light on it. Because I do think if you think, I mean, you have more experience than me, but um, you probably often see people who you know are desperate to tell you something, but they just can't find the right words or way to express it. Mm -hmm. And I think, again, that's where the curiosity and the questioning comes from. Because mm -hmm. if I, you know, if I see that you're struggling and I can ask you a question, it opens you up and, and it gets you out of thinking about or worrying about how I'm going to perceive you. You know, it puts mm. you in a different, totally different mindset. And also, if you set aside a time to talk about a conversation where you're not, you're hung, you're not hungry and you're not thirsty, you know, you've got to take care of your physical self too. Mm -hmm. And you sit down and you even tell that person, you know, my intention in this conversation is for us to collaborate and I have something challenging that I want to talk to you about. And, 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 and to keep it short and specific, as specific as you can to start the conversation. Ooh, actually, let me back up. To start the conversation, I think the very first thing is to be positive. Like, mm -hmm. you know what, John? I really appreciate the relationship we have and how connected we are. And if something that's a little bit difficult to talk about, you know, would you be open to having a dialogue about that with me? And that yeah. automatically, I think, I don't know how that sounded to you, but I think it, it disarms somebody just a little bit. Oh, no, without without a doubt. And I think I think the other part is especially for the person listening uh, is to is to not go in to not immediately think that your your role is to fix anything. Because let's face it, we love that, don't we? Like you start talking, you start telling me about something and you haven't even got through half of your first sentence when I'm already tell, giving you advice how to fix it. Mm -hmm. I love it. I especially see that male female dynamic. You yeah, know, it's yeah, typically, yeah. typically the guy that wants to come in and fix it because generally speaking, men, you, you want to be our heroes. You know, you want to mm. walk. Oh, you got a problem. I want to fix it. And sometimes with women, because we like to talk, we process out loud and we just need to, we don't even know exactly what we think. And we're saying it out loud and you're thinking, oh, okay, she needs this. We may not even need that. And for a mm. guy, and correct me if I'm wrong, tell me what you think here. Generally, I see guys process internally. So when you come out with something, 
pretty well formed and you already have an idea about it. But how does that sound to you? No, no, I think that sounds uh, that sounds exactly right, because it mean, it also means, obviously, as we know from active listening and that it also means that you're not really listening because, yeah, maybe I mm -hmm. listened to the first few words that you said, but then I went into thinking about, oh, well, I think I have a solution to that. Meanwhile, you're still talking. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm missing mm -hmm. the rest of it because I'm already here with the coming up with the solution. And it's like, a, and you're not asking for a solution at that point. You're asking to have a conversation. That's why it's important too, when you're having a conversation with somebody, when you start to, you start to notice, you know, once you start paying attention to this and you notice it to be able to say, what do you need from me? Mm -hmm. And then that way they can say, oh, I'd love you to help me problem solve. Or, you know what? I just need you to listen. Or for, you know, women, it's like, I just need to cry on someone's shoulder, you know, whatever those things are. And that way you both are clear. And that really helps too. Yeah. And as I said, I mean, I think it's, um, it's a very important time for people to be able to have these conversations, because mm -hmm. I do think a lot of people lost their anchors and mm -hmm. their anchors maybe were Maybe they were false anchors in many ways as well, um, and maybe they neglected the ones that they should have paid attention to. But I think absolutely, I think uh, those are conversations that that need to take place. And and I think as you mentioned earlier, like we live in this busy world, and I always say it's it's busy, but it's really distracted world, right? We're just really super distracted, and we've got stuff going on all the time. And you have to make an active choice to push that aside if you want mm -hmm. to focus in on something like this. You know what? I, I agree. And I am hoping that out of the pandemic, which has been really hard, you know, mm -hmm. that we take the connections that we formed and the idea that life doesn't have to be so darn busy. Maybe we not, we need to not say yes to all of those things we say yes to and spend a little more time with our relationships. I know fathers and, and not that it's, you know, dad's work and moms stay home, but I know fathers in particular, though, that have been really, really working hard and have had to work from home and have enjoyed spending more time with their kids, you know, totally different. Work. And the family, you know, the three of yeah. them go out together or the four or whatever. And they've really said, wow, I realize there's something I've been missing here. And I hope people carry that into whatever's next for us as we continue to work through this pandemic. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. Absolutely. I mean, it's funny at the at the start of the pandemic, like last year, you know, when everybody was at home, I mean, you could see there was everybody was out walking, families were out walking, they were doing all of these things. Unfortunately, um, that seems to have dissipated somewhat <laughs> dramatically. <laughs> but to your point, I mean, I think there was a wonderful and maybe there is a wonderful opportunity here, maybe to recalibrate mm -hmm. your life and to mm -hmm. realize that you mm -hmm. can, you can work and be successful and do all of these things. And at the same time, be very connected with those who are around you. And, you know, is it all about, you know, I have to get that next raise. I have to get the next money. I have to buy the next car. I have to buy the next boat. Sometimes it's like, maybe that's really not what it's about. And sometimes it's okay to slow down a little bit and you may not get that next thing, but you're going to have more quality time with the people you love. I think we're rethinking things. And I hope this is a time in life where worldwide we start to be, rethink some things, you know, that maybe we're moving into a whole different way of being in the world that has been triggered by the pandemic. Yeah, no, you, it, it may well be, because I do think that um, over the last while, it, it, because of all of these distractions, mm -hmm. because of all these devices and social media and everything, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like people are, will do anything not to be alone with their own thoughts yeah. for even for five seconds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think we're hungry for connection. I mean, and I will say that, you know, the Zoom meetings and all that too, I never thought I would be doing as much work as I am over Zoom. And it works. It, it mm -hmm. is a tool that we can use, but hopefully it doesn't replace the, you know, the touch, the human touch, the human connection. But it is also something, again, that connects us to people that we wouldn't have connected with in a way that you can see face to face. You can look at yeah. somebody and, you know, so I think that helps, too. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so then when when you want to have these kind of conversations, like mm -hmm. we said, I mean, it's great to have somebody that you can have the conversation with and, mm -hmm. you know, you can sort of set I wouldn't say ground rules, but you can mm -hmm. set a kind of expectations that you want to have this conversation, you want to have it at the right time, you want mm -hmm. to have it distraction free, and you're not looking for a solution immediately, you really just mm -hmm. want to be heard in a kind of non judgmental fashion. 
Ah, you have just encapsulated it quite beautifully. <laughs> and the importance also, after you have that and you sit down and, you know, hopefully you both, you know, you learn a new language as far as how you mm -hmm. want to communicate with one another. And it takes you out of, sometimes people are talking and one person hears this and they respond to that. And, and by the end, it's like playing telephone. By the end of the time, you don't even know exactly what you were trying to say. Okay. But when you sit down and you plan this out and you have a language, it helps and it helps people. It helps our anxiety go down. And one of the things that's really important, like I used to be in the corporate world for quite a while and Ken Blanchard wrote this book called the one minute manager. Love the book. And the basic premise that I always take away from it is catch people doing something right. Mm. We need to reward steps along the way as you're getting to the ultimate goal. Sometimes it's like, you know, I hear people saying, well, they should know. It's like, well, what was a step that person took? Because when you get rewarded, and again, that's the no for notice. When you get noticed, you feel better. And when you're validated that you know you matter, you know, that helps keep a behavior and a new way of communication in place, as opposed to it just being a fleeting thing that happens in the moment because you know someone's upset and you're trying your best. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's such a such an important point because we have, I mean, we're you know, as humans, we're 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 very strange, very strange animals, aren't we? Um, and to your point about the, you know Ken Blanchard, the one minute manager, and the ca catching people doing something right. Um, we we are hardwired to it's like when you do a performance review or something like you know what happens they go oh well Jeannie I just want to go through your performance you did um, yeah you did this pretty good that was very good yeah you did that now here's the 50 things that you didn't do very well and we're going to spend all of the time on those right <laughs> I hear you what I hated when they said before I give you your performance review I want you to fill out your own and share it with me oh I hated that because I'm like you don't want to brag but you don't want to focus you know the things that you know you missed and you're hoping your boss doesn't remember yeah. that you missed them so i hated that too but you're right and there's something about those performance reviews where it's the most recent behavior also that stands out mm -hmm. not the thing you did six months ago where you saved the day when you created that proposal at the very nick of time when you only had an hour and you needed 10 you know yeah, but I love that idea, like catching people doing something right, because it really does turn our natural instincts on our head, mm -hmm. on its head, because as I said, I mean, we have a tendency to go, oh, you, mm -hmm. that's going well, okay, I'll just keep moving, I'm not going to disturb them, everything is good. Mm -hmm. But if I see one thing out of place, I'm like, oh, hang on a second, crisis. <laughs> Right, because we tend to be critical. It's I think because our brain is always questioning, you know, we tend to, I tend to notice the thing that you didn't do. You have to retrain your brain almost to be grateful and notice the things that someone did well, and really pay attention to those. It's hard because again, our natural tendency is to notice those things we want to fix. Yeah. And I love that you said that of those no's, the notice piece, because I do think that that is um, whether it's in your personal relationship or whether it's in in work, that is the, that is the thing I think that that really bothers people the most is when they don't feel noticed. It's like when it's even like in the home if you do stuff and nobody nobody ever even acknowledges it, right? You know, mm -hmm. you you feel kind of you feel disrespected. You feel a little bit you know, taken for granted, same in a work environment. But, so I think that idea of noticing when people are doing things and, and giving them the, the kudos, even if it's just a quick like, oh, nice. Yeah, excellent job. I mean, right. that means all, that can mean the world to people. It does, whether you're five or 85, you know, it doesn't matter. We all have that desire and to know that we matter. I want to know that I am contributing that I'm giving something to you and you know that I that I make a difference you know so I think yeah it really does yeah and, and I mean the thing is like we're all we all have we all have things that we we need to you know confront within ourselves of different you know magnitudes or whatever we all have things from our past and all of that kind of uh, kind of stuff um and I think in many ways, I mean, certainly I can tell you culturally, you know, coming from Ireland, you know, we're fantastic at, you know, burying things, you know, we don't deal with anything. You know, we <laughs> bury it all and we just move on. <laughs> but I do think it's it's becoming more and more apparent that people, you know, need to need to find a space to be able to to deal with these things and to recognize that it's okay. It's okay to have something from way back. And it's okay if it may, may seem insignificant to other people, or even when you say it out loud, it sounds a bit ridiculous. As long as, if it's having an impact on you, then it's important. Yes, yes. 
and, and we need to make it a priority and we need to make time for it. It doesn't just happen naturally. You know, I have some couples that I work with said, if this relationship is supposed to work, it should be easy. It's not easy. It's a business, personal, you know, and, and we have to set aside time, just like you set aside time in your calendar. You have to set aside time to connect and sometimes even to be intimate, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think that's a. I, I, I love that you raise that point because, yeah, we live in a we live in this culture where, I always call it the shortcut culture or the instant gratification, the easy culture. Like everything's supposed to be easy, right? And we're not supposed. Mm-hmm. Nothing is supposed to be difficult, and we're supposed to be happy all the time too. So <laughs> we live completely artificial. Completely artificial, right? Number one, you know, you can't be happy all the time, and you know, all, and. Um, and you know everything can't be perfect you have to deal with things and the idea of working hard i mean i think that's great and it, it, i think that's the part about relationships whether in work or whether in in your personal relationships is mm-hmm. the idea that you have to work at them and that just runs counter to the culture and i think that's so damaging for people because then to your point like your your the couples that you reference there say oh well if this should be easy mm-hmm. well no who said it should be easy you've got two distinct people here why should it be easy right right and and it's complex we're such complex yeah. beings and thank goodness you know and thank goodness we're different you know we bring something to the table when i have a passion and you have a passion and we talk about that we bring something new to the table we don't need to you know i don't know life life is complex and people are complex but we're also fun it's like to be able also to laugh at yourselves and have fun with it too and say oh no here we go again we're going down that road wait a minute wait a minute you know and when you again when you start to develop that language with each other and that commitment to each other it doesn't have to always be so darn hard but i want to go back to one other thing you said about being happy we have this notion and there's a positive part of it but there's also Mm -hmm. a negative part of it and that's the whole idea of Make it till you make it and smile and, you know, set, mm-hmm. set, set what you want in the world and the universe is going to provide it. And, and while, yes, you want to be in that positive space, if you're not also acknowledging, you know, the hurt and the pain and, and this bothers me, you're not being genuinely human. You know, you're kind of being this little, you know, robot that's supposed to be happy. We're more than that. And that's how sometimes we need a hug. You know, yeah. which hopefully we'll be able to do more of in the near future. <laughs> yeah, well, we got the we're we're getting the masks off. Woo-hoo. So next yeah. step, you know, yeah. yeah, metaphorically and literally, and literally, Taking yeah. Those masks but, off. but it, but that's a but that's a great point that you made. Is is yeah? I mean, we do, like I said, we do live in this culture where we're like supposed to be, you know, because let's face it, you don't want to stick up your Instagram story of you looking glum and unhappy, right? You know, everybody's like, oh, like life is fantastic. And it it creates, it, it, you know, it creates such an artificial existence in many ways, because it is, yes, you should, you should strive for happiness. And hopefully you find a lot of happiness. But mm-hmm. we live, we're, the human experience is not 100% happy all the time. So you got to deal with the other issues as well. And if you're in this artificial state of thinking that you have to, as you said, like fake it, that everything is fantastic mm-hmm. all of the time, that's just not sustainable mentally. Right, right. You got your Facebook profile and who you really are. And believe yeah. me, I see the other side of the door of the Facebook profile. <laughs> you know, and, and I don't know, and I, and I think it's to be kind to each other. You know, everybody's been through a lot of stuff, you know, and instead of, we can instantly go to judgment and instead of being judgment, just say, hey, mm, I wonder what's going on in that person's world, you know? Why, why they're the way they, why they're responding the way they do. Or I look at the distinction between react and respond, you know? Reacting is just something that happens in the moment and you just go for it and you don't really think about it. When you respond, you take a minute and you breathe and, and you think about what you're saying first. Sometimes we just react. Yeah, and 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 again, unfortunately, uh, that's the culture that we live in, and we've been given these tools, right, that allow us to react without thinking, right? You know, it's like mm-hmm. you can. I mean, first of all, it was email. You know, you could fire off an email. Now you can mm-hmm. fire off tweets and Instagram, who, whatever. You can, you can, you can find where, and and people have got this thing. So, oh, I'm going to be first to make a comment on that, right? right, right. Well, you know, being first isn't always the best idea, right? As you right. said. So we do need to teach ourselves to not to react immediately, but to to think and give space. And then maybe the best course of action is not to react at all. I need to close this window. I'm so sorry. No worries.
Sorry about the noise with that. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, and, and I hear you. And and to not be and to try to be real about it, you know, mm-hmm. and to to give people the benefit of the doubt, but also to speak authentically. You know, yeah. we, we have this persona and this facade because some are so afraid to be known. Because if you really knew me, would you still like me? If yeah, you yeah. Really knew what was deep inside of there. Yeah, it's that imposter syndrome, isn't it? Uh, which yes, is one of my, sure. I'm, it's one of my favorite subjects to talk about. I was going to say one of my favorite things, but it's not one of my favorite things. It's one of my favorite <laughs> subjects, just to clarify. But I do think that is uh, that that is something. And the more that we live out our lives online, even in a professional sense, like on LinkedIn mm-hmm. and all of that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. is I think mm-hmm. you know you, you try to put you try to put the best your best foot forward and present yourself in the best way possible, and then mm-hmm. you suddenly hit that paradox where you're like, oh, but but that's not really me. I mean, what they find out that what I'm really like and whatever, and you're just going, no, actually, that is you. These are your achievements. Be proud mm-hmm. of them. Like, don't be mm-hmm. afraid. Right, right. And I think the thing that's also cool that's happening these days is there's this this new idea of telling your story, you know, and being mm. vulnerable and, and realizing that to be vulnerable is actually courageous. It's not, you know, we used to think being vulnerable, you're not supposed to be vulnerable, you're supposed to be strong. But, you know, I think the more you see leaders that, that are able to admit, you know what, I made a mistake with that one, you know, and, and apologize. I think our leaders need to demonstrate the qualities as human beings that we want to teach our children, you know, and I think mm-hmm. we're, we're starting to see more of that. Of course, we see the opposite too, but I'm, and I'm hoping that as a human species, we start to embrace the totality of who we are and the totality of the person we're with. Just because you make a mistake, that's not who you are. I heard it said by someone that we are more than the biggest mistake we've made. We were always more than that. And sometimes we get so trapped in our own mind and beat our own subset. We can be our own worst enemy. Mm. You know, I'm going to beat me up more than somebody else probably is because I know all those little things that are going on inside there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you only know the thing on the surface. So you can right. beat me up to your heart's content, but I can beat myself up way, way better because I know right. things you'll never know. <laughs> okay, share yeah. one. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm just Take taking the mask I was, off, John. Yeah, no, no. I've, I've been speaking about other people, obviously. Of course. Of obviously, course. obviously, I Not have me. nothing. <laughs> I'm I'm 100 evolved at this stage. There you go. I, there you go. I wish. No, mm-hmm. and but I think it's. But you know, the funny thing is, in just in conclusion, Dr. Jane, I mean, I think as as we as we get older, mm-hmm. we actually start to we actually if if our eyes are open we actually do start to see ourselves in in totality a little bit more and we realize we start to see our blind spots and we start to see the things that that we were really good at we start to see the the things that maybe we're not so good at and some Mm -hmm. of the mistakes maybe we've made that you know at the end of the day go up to make who that go into making who we are and our experiences Mm -hmm. in life but i do think we become a little bit more authentic and honest maybe as we get older so too. My dad saying we get old too soon and smart too late. I hated that saying, <laughs> you know, I think it's the opposite. I think, although I think it's openness because I also work with people that are, you know, younger or in their early thirties or even twenties. I think we are starting to get to the place where we are, where who we are is more important. Some of the conversations I hear people having with their friends, male and female are much more, uh, much, they have a much greater depth to them than they used to have. You know, and hopefully as we get older, we get wiser too. But I'm seeing yeah. more of it come in earlier these days. Yeah, well, that's a good thing because I know when I was younger and we certainly weren't having deep conversations, that's for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Um, well, listen, Dr. Jeannie, this is fantastic. All of Dr. Jeannie's uh, information is going to be below this video. Uh, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Well, the thing that I love to do is to help people have courageous conversations. You know, I do a lot of work with couples and, you know, I specialize in infidelity and to have those tough conversations. I guess I believe in the human spirit. I believe Mm -hmm. that each one of us has in deep inside of us, you know, a lot to offer the world. And, And I love helping bring that out, whether it's an individual or whether it's a couple and and most of the time someone comes in with some kind of a crisis and you know it's my passion to help people work through that and get to the other side and really start to enjoy life more and you know be that holistic self that they are 
Yeah. Well, listen, I uh, absolutely encourage people to go check out uh, Dr. Jeannie's side, check out the work she does. Like, you don't need to suffer. You know, there's people there to help you. And and often a third a third party is what you need. You just need somebody who's who's independent and, you know, doesn't have a dog in the fight, you know. So I would encourage you to... Uh, to review this and um, and you know if you have issues go go find go go talk to Dr. Jeannie. Thank All you. Right. John. Yeah, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Bye bye.